Hello, I'm Carla Schaefer and welcome to Senior Centers in Action. Each month we'll spotlight various events at Anne Arundel County's seven senior activity centers. This month we'll visit the Pascal Senior Activity Center to check out some classic cars, we'll drop by the O'Malley Senior Activity Center for some barbecue and entertainment, and we'll get some information about emergency preparedness at the South County Senior Activity Center. But first, have you ever wondered if some of the old items you've collected over the years have some real value to them? Well, the O'Malley Senior Activity Center hosted their version of an antiques roadshow with appraisers Steve Guterman and Todd Peenstra to see if members were hiding some hidden treasures at home. Okay, well, I'm here with Steve Guterman and Todd Peenstra, who are our appraisers today. Todd Peenstra is of Peenstra Appraisals and Steve is of Nova Gold LLC. Welcome. Thank you Hello. very much. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for coming down to O'Malley today and doing a presentation. I hear that you do these quite often. Yes, uh, Todd and I, I guess we've been working together for ooh, probably the better part of six months doing several a week, yeah. would you say? And the venue stays about the same. We've uh, been doing, a, a, I guess, what we call our own version of an antique road show, which, of course, is our version of one. And we do it kind of unscripted. We see what happens. and. It was a lot of fun today working with you people, and it's always interesting to see what they bring, right, Todd? Oh, yeah. You know, to me, what's really cool about it is, um, you know, people, everybody has something in their house that, they, that they're concerned about or they, they want to know about it, they want to know its story. Like, they have some of the story, but they don't have all of it. And um, it's just interesting to hear their side of it because Steve and I realize that, you know, we're businessmen. But at the same time, these are family treasures. And so when people bring us stuff, there's a little bit of that trust there. And so we have to, you know, temper it between we try to make it fun. We want to hear their stories. We want to tell them what they want to know, which is here's what it is and here's what it's worth. But a lot of times, don't you agree, Steve, you have to manage those expectations? That's, that is probably the biggest problem is that folks have been watching a lot of programs on TV and they've seen that, geez, I've gone to the garage sale and I bought this thing for $3 and it's worth, you know, several hundred thousand. We don't see that, you know. By and large, you're trying to manage exactly the expectations and show them that the, the, the give them a general idea of the the things that they've accumulated and passed down. And uh, we find that generally speaking, you know, great grandma's stuff usually has you know minimal value to ex with the exception of something that's emotional to the family and that's about it more of a keepsake value exactly. than anything else Perfect. but but you did have some interesting items come in today did you have a favorite always do uh, usually here's the the best advice is the that which people think are worth are worth a ton of money are worth nothing and that which they didn't even want to show you are worth a ton of money it goes the other way um, I had an amethyst a ring that was uh, is set in 18 carat that was worth easily you know over a thousand dollars versus a piece you know that, that she wasn't even going to show it to me because she thought that it was worth nothing and Todd, did you have a favorite today? Well, my favorite today was that Steve is in a suit. Normally, Steve never wears a suit. Like, we were supposed to wear a golf shirt. So, of course, he comes dressed like he's going to a funeral. Meanwhile, I look like I'm going out on the golf course. Thanks, Steve. I yeah, appreciate no that. <laughs> okay, any out. items that surprised you that people brought in? <laughs> Remember the guy that brought in... Um, the guy that brought in the uh, the toaster and the frying pan. Yeah. There's a lady and a, a married couple brought in a frying, literally an iron frying pan that's worth nothing. Right. And then the toaster from the 50s said if it works, it's worth a little bit of money because it's so cool. You remember I was showing how the toast wouldn't snag, you could get was, it out quick? I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. But I was a little concerned about that frying pan. I didn't know what he was <laughs> going to do with that. Had a like a skull imprint in the back. I didn't know what he was using. Yeah, the shape part. was a little warped. It did look a little unusual. <laughs> Just like Steve. So yeah, hey, warped. what are you going to do? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Well, if people have objects at home that they're interested in getting appraised, what's your best advice? Contact either Todd or myself. We'd love to come in. We'll give you certainly some strategies of what to do with that which you have collected. Uh, separate them. Most of what I do in my line is come into people's houses and make piles for them, you know, <laughs> because they're trying to figure out uh, $1,000 piles and $2,000 piles and what's got lots of value and what has a little bit of value so they can figure out what to do with the disposition of their estate. Yeah, that's what we try to do. I mean, as I said in the beginning of the program, the main thing is, Steve and I, there's no conflict of interest. Like, we come into your house, we tell it like it is. I mean, I think that's what people like. Even if, like, let's say your mom is downsizing and she has a chair, and I come into your house and say it's only worth $15. She might not be happy with that, but it frees her up 
to do the next thing, which is to clear give it away, it you know, clear it out. And so that's what we do. But, you know, we send people in the right direction. If it's something that should go to auction, we'll tell them that and tell them the correct auction because auctions are all different and they, they, they have their own places. So depending on what you have and the quality of it or a dealer or a, con or a consignment store or Steve or wherever, you know, we'll, we'll steer them in the right direction as to where they should go uh, to get the most for their money so they don't get taken advantage of. Well, thank you both so much for coming and donating your time today. It was thank a pleasure you having you. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Well, I'm here with Marty Criston, who is one of uh, the people who brought in some of his antiques today. And Marty, you brought in a Stein, which you thought was German, but you found out it's something else. Yes, uh, the appraisal said that he originally he thought it was German also, but then when he looked at it, he thought it was English. But when then he looked at a crest, a little emblem on the top of it, and he said it's uh, probably Dutch. It definitely should be Dutch. Uh, it's quite old. I, I had it appraised in New York City. I, the reason I got, how, how I got this, obtained this, is I had a bar in New York, a bar and a restaurant, and a gentleman came in and he offered me uh, this stein for one of those big Budweiser, sign, uh, Budweiser steins that they used to give us for free. So I had no objection to doing that. I mean, that's, this was old and pretty. Um, it's, it was, pray, I think it was in the 1700s. I believe it was late 1700s that it was made. This, I, I have everything uh, documented at home, and I just wanted to get an update on the price of it, what it was worth so I can reinsure it, re it for the proper amount. Uh, I'm going to send this to the appraiser, and he's going to try to get me a, an absolute amount, the actual cost of, of selling this item, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to, I just, I'd like to know what it's worth, that's all. And about how much did he say it was worth? Uh, this gentleman here didn't really give me an amount, but I did get it, and it was 20 years ago. Uh, but the, the f price of these things varies tremendously from year to year. Uh, it's popularity. If it's, if it's a popular German uh, Stein or English Stein or Dutch Stein, which might make a difference, uh, that it was about twelve to $1,700 that we would be able to get, I would be able to get for it. The appraiser, the house would get about $2,200. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's, that's what it is. That's it's fantastic. Style, and it's all hand-painted. Uh, we never touched it or cleaned it, which I was told not to do by the appraisal house, the auction house. And we just keep it. It's a nice ornament. And, you know, yeah. we, it's a family one. And I don't know which grandchild to give it to. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite. I'm just kidding. Yes. I'm just kidding. And just out of curiosity, now, how much was that Bud Light sign worth? Well, we had paid nothing for it. It was, it was not only a sign, it was a stein. It was a oh, stein. Okay. Yeah, it was, you know, it was an old German type stein, but it was made by Budweiser. And it said Budweiser on the bottom. But he wanted that. So this is we swap. So you really made a good swap then. Yes, and at that time I really didn't care. But it was just a pretty thing, something pretty to get. Yeah, yeah. We we enjoy it. We look at it once in a while, and we really enjoy it. Like right. I said, it's it's one of a kind. Yeah. Well, Marty, thank you so much for sharing it You're with welcome. us. Welcome. Have a great day. Well, I'm here with Janet Courtney, and welcome to the show, Janet. Thank you. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> and what did you bring today? Well, I brought a creamer and sugar bowl, which I thought was a very expensive because it was gold, twenty dollars. And all I wanted was enough to go to Vegas. <laughs> well, it's enough to gamble with or to right. start gambling with at Vegas anyway. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get the gold off. Do now, you boil it? I don't know. I guess that's a better question for the appraiser. What's the story behind it? How did you come well, to it? It was my great-grandmother's, and it's been around a long time. So do you intend to keep it now or oh, yes. sell it? No, I'll keep it. Yes. And I appreciate all the help we had today. That was wonderful. We should do it again. You should. I think yes. everyone learned quite a lot about right. different people. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, some of those in attendance learned that their items had only sentimental value. Some of them were surprised to find they had some real treasures in their possession. We want to thank Steve and Todd for visiting the O'Malley Senior Activity Center and giving their members their honest opinions. As we come into the summer home stretch, it's important to remember that hurricane season started June 1st and runs through to November 30th. County residents are well aware that a major storm can have a devastating effect on property and lives, but luckily Aaron Salter from the county's Office of Emergency Management has been visiting senior centers with a program to help seniors become prepared for any emergency. We caught up with Aaron at the South County Senior Activity Center to talk more about emergency preparedness. Well, I'm here with Aaron Salter, who's the Community Outreach and Volunteer Coordinator at the Anne Arundel County Office of Emergency Management. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you. So you're here today at the South County Senior Center to do a presentation on emergency preparedness. What kind of things are you going to teach our seniors today about emergency preparedness? 
So normally we start the presentation and we talk about what emergency management actually does. So we go through some of the different functions and we talk about our EOC, our Emergency Operations Center. And then we go into a little bit about how to prepare a kit, some of the items you should include, a gallon of water per person per day, um, speak a little bit about food, and then we move into making a plan, which is an important part that a lot of people forget. Make a plan and share it with your family, that way your family knows where you're going to be during an emergency. And then we finish the pres uh, presentation and let them know how they can find more information and how to reach us at emergency management. And we find ourselves in the middle of hurricane season. Why is emergency preparedness so important? So the reason it's so important is because during an emergency, you definitely won't be thinking clearly. So if you have all of your supplies made up beforehand, during the emergency, you'll be able to just grab your kit, look at your plan, and you know exactly what you need to do instead of kind of fumbling around and trying to figure out what, what's next. Mm -hmm. Are there special concerns for seniors when preparing their kits? Definitely. So two concerns are medications. Definitely make sure you have all your medications, your prescriptions. Um, extra medication if you need it, and also the mobility aspect. So make sure you know exactly where you're going to go in your house if there's an emergency, and how you'll leave if you need to leave your house. And you have a, a special emphasis now on pets and preparing for your pets in emergencies too, right? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So you want to have, make sure you have a carrier for your pets. Uh, make sure you actually have a picture of your pet and yourself. That way if you need to go to animal control and locate your pet, they can look at your picture and see that that actually is your pet and it'll make the process a whole lot easier. Now if there's residents out there who are interested in getting more information about what they should include in their kits or just emergency preparedness information in general, where can they go? So there's two sites. They can go to our website, uh, Anne Arundel County uh, OEM. And they can also go to ready.gov, and ready.gov has all kinds of brochures and preparedness information. And I understand that there's an emergency preparedness fair coming in September. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah it's going to be pretty big. We've been preparing for it since March now. Um, it's going to be at the Lowe's of Severn off of Quarterfield Road. Uh, it's going to be September 21st from 10 to 2 p.m. So we're going to have all kinds of fire engines, police vehicles, a lot of different county agencies are going to be there. We're also going to have some demos, so we'll have K-9 uh, demo from the police. We might have one of their robots and also maybe a decon unit there as well. Okay, so fun for, for exactly. all ages. For the family, yeah, it's free. Uh, it's going to be rain or shine. Obviously, if there's a hurricane or something, we won't have it, but right. if there's showers or it's a little misty, we'll still have the fair. Okay, and there will be more glow sticks there. Exactly, yeah. We, we run out of the glow sticks pretty quickly, so there'll be more glow sticks, a lot of different handouts uh, from emergency management, and then also emergency management, we're going to set up uh, cot and blankets to simulate what it looks like at a shelter. So if you do have to go to a shelter, we'll have a little simulation there of what you can kind of expect. You'll have an understanding of... Yeah. of your accommodations. At the exactly, shelter. exactly. All right. Well, Aaron, thank you so much Thanks. for being on our show today. Thank you. Remember, you can get more information about the Emergency Operations Center by visiting aacounty.org slash OEM and emergency preparedness information in general at ready.gov. Well, fall is approaching and activities at the county senior activity centers will be getting into full swing. Want to know what's happening at your local senior center in September? Have a look at our senior center calendar for more information.
What's better than a sunny day, hot dogs on the grill, and classic cars? Mother Nature definitely provided the hot weather, and the Pascal Senior Activity Center had the hot dogs and hot rods at their first classic car show. Well, I'm here with Bob Evison, who is the coordinator of the Pascal Classic Car Show. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, Bob, we're here on an extremely hot July summer afternoon, but the hottest thing around today I see are all of the classic cars. Can you tell us about some of the cars here today? Uh, sure. Anyone that you want to know about. Well, you know? well, I guess first of all, you're Zippy's dad, and, and Zippy is right behind us here. Can you tell us about Zippy? Yeah, Zippy is a 1954 Chevrolet 210, two doors, still got the six owner, 235 engine. I've had it for about 15 years and customized it six years ago. And how did Zippy get her name? My wife named it because the six-owner just zips down the road, so she called it Zippy. So I put the name on it. And what other cars do we have here today? 64 GTO. This one is a 68 Ford uh, Galaxy Pro Street. And if you can see there's 57 Chevy. Uh, I believe theirs is a 62 Chevy, 60, 69 Ford, 69 uh, Corvette, a 78 Corvette. And I'm not sure the year the MG, okay. or I'm not sure the one with the Mercedes and then the 56 Ford. So clearly some classic cars from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And we have some 50s music playing right now. We have some hot dogs on the grill. And this whole event was your idea. Can you tell us, why did you decide to have a classic car show at Pascal? Well, guys, that exercise morning, we were just talking. We feel be nice since we're in the cars. Come out and bring them out for the people that can't get out to the shows to see them. And so we'll bring some out here and let them see them. And you're no stranger to car shows. You tell me you go out all the time. I've been doing total, I guess I got about 30 some years of doing shoes. I used to run shoes for about 20 years. So I'm used to it and I'm experienced at it. Okay. Well, Bob, thank you so much for organizing this event and for taking the time to talk to us today. Well, we're here at Pascal Senior Center with the Senior Center Director, Nancy Allred. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us out here today on a very hot, hot day. July day. But uh, there are some beautiful cars here at what is hopefully the first annual classic car show at Pascal. Yeah, it all started with a conversation with some of our uh, members who uh, gather for coffee uh, three mornings a week. And they come in and uh, exercise a bit and then have coffee together. And they got to talking about that they do car shows. And, and if we ever wanted to have a display, that they could do that. And so here we are today, as you said, on a very hot day. But we have some really hot cars. Um, and people are having a good time. Yeah. Now, a lot of these cars belong to the Pascal Senior Center members? Um, several are members of the center, and um, I think Nancy, our office support person, has been busy today signing up some folks that uh, maybe are here for the first time because of the car displays that are interested in joining the center. In addition to the cars, you have some other things happening behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about the food and entertainment? Well, our original plan was to have a DJ outdoors, but we did move him inside, and so we do have recorded music out here. And we're grilling up some hot dogs and um, uh, enjoying a, a, a little breeze every, every now and then. <laughs> and Nancy, do you have any other fun events coming up a little later in the summer or the fall? Um, we always have things going on here. Um, we do have our newsletter is available here at the center, but it also is available um, online. So if you want to check out our specials, um, we will be having a fall registration coming up for uh, the classes offered through the Anne Arundel Community College. They are offered here at our location, and there's a wide variety of fitness, enrichment, um, all sorts of classes. And registration begins August the 1st, um, but continues um, it, it throughout September, and the classes will, beginning, will begin the first week of October. So there's a lot going on here, and I hope people will come check us out. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Nancy. Okay. You're welcome. We want to thank Bob again for organizing this wonderful event. Well, weeks after the sweltering heat in the area, the weather broke just in time for the O'Malley Senior Activity Center's summer picnic, where there was some good barbecue served with some outstanding entertainment courtesy of Susie Estrada. Over. 
Well, I'm here at the O'Malley Senior Activity Center with Ruth Gardner, who's a member of the Senior Center and a volunteer as well. So welcome, Ruth. Can you tell us why do you like to come to the O'Malley Senior Center? I started here about 19 years ago. And 19 years ago, I met some wonderful people which have continued on through the years that I'm here now. It's just a very nice place to be. I couldn't choose a better place. And you, and you told me earlier that you've gone to different senior centers, and this is really your favorite. It is. It is. And what are some of the things that you like to do here at the senior center? Well, I, oh, I've done the classes, the exercising classes, and they do a lot of trips. I do the trips, and of course, I am a big time volunteer. I'm on the board here. I just like to be a person who's very helpful as well, not just sitting around. And you were volunteering today to help out with the barbecue. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Yes. And, and tell us more about those trips. Where, where do you guys go on these trips? Okay, we have trips. We have a, a lady who uh, takes us on these trips. We do pay to go on these trips. We go everywhere. Virginia. Georgia, Washington, D.C., Delaware. I don't gamble, so I don't go on the gambling trips. Perfect. Well, thank you for talking to us today, Ruth, and the Senior Center is very lucky to have you. Thank you. Well, we're here with Susie Estrada and Joe at the O'Malley Senior Activity Center's annual barbecue. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you performed a variety of music today, a lot of older songs, some Beatles. How did you come up with your set list today? I guess that was more me. I, I just know that it's an older crowd and they'll like the more classic rock, uh, the, the older music. Although they will still listen to the contemporary stuff, the older stuff usually uh, gives them some memories that yeah. may be special for them. Now, Susie, at the very end, you blew everyone away by singing your rendition of Ave Maria. Can you, uh, you told us that you like to sing that at maybe some funerals or weddings. Why today? We sang this um, for the first time. We've probably played here around four times or so. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if someone requested it I, th that first time. I, I think we just decided that just, it would work well with this crowd. Yeah. And they seem to really appreciate yeah. it. Because they, um, it, it's kind of nice because some of the different venues we have are, you know, different atmospheres where people are talking, and which is fine. But this is nice because everyone's actually listening and they seem to appreciate some of the, um, some of the song choices we do. And the first time we did Ave Maria, it just, it seems to bring back a lot of memories for people. And the woman today, she said um, that that was sung at her wedding when both of her wa daughters were born. Mm -hmm. And so typically it will bring back some sort of memory for someone. And so since they're actually listening and appreciating it, we, we normally, um, the past, I think three times we've been here, we've ended with that. And it gives Susie a chance to go back to her roots yeah. of, classical you know, music. opera and classical yeah. music. So you've been here a few times. Do you have any plans to go to any other senior centers? Or? We sure. actually did the Edgewater Senior Center mm -hmm. one time, and that seemed to go well. So yes, yeah. we, we enjoy doing this. Yeah. I, I really like playing here because like, there's been a time, I think it was the Edgewater one, where um, we played a song, I think it was At Last, and there was an older couple, and it seemed like the wife may have had um, Alzheimer's or something. Mm -hmm. And I just remember I almost started, like, just lost it in the middle of the song because the, I looked who maybe was her husband, started dancing with her. And she didn't really know what was going on, but she remembered the moves. And so they're dancing. And I, it might have been their wedding song, for all I know, or some, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but it, it's always special when we sing somewhere like this. So I personally really enjoy it. Well, they say that one of the things that you do retain is still music and a love for music even if you have Alzheimer's or dementia so that's a wonderful gift that you can bring people back and and Joe we have a question for you we always see Susie Estrada and Joe are you like Madonna and Cher Joe what is your last name my last name is Bircham 
but I like to promote Susie Estrada. <laughs> she she's the main talent. Oh, so. stop! No, he's obviously just as talented. But every once in a while, we'll bring in because we talked about this in length when we first mm -hmm. started playing out. And um, sometimes we'll bring in a drummer or we'll bring in a bass player, and it just seemed just more. Um, marketing wise to just go with one name and then we wouldn't have to be like Susie and Joe and Greg and Jim yes. and James <laughs> so we just kept it like that and that way it won't mix things up if we I just actually like being the um, center of attention and <laughs> just well well speaking of promoting you two what other venues do you have coming up what other shows um, tonight we play at Fido's in Annapolis um, on the patio tomorrow night we play at Jay King's um, we do parties we do a lot of private parties, like a 50th birthday party, 40th um, graduation, birthdays, that kind of thing, which we enjoy. Um, August, we've got a ton of stuff coming up. Um, yes. Uh, and third Tuesday of every month, we're mm -hmm. at uh, Ramshead Roadhouse, which is nice. It's mm -hmm. consistent for people to know. And then we, sure, yes. times in August. And then we have the county fair coming uh, up. Yes, we're going to be there uh, twice mm -hmm. during that week. We're doing an acoustic set, I think, on like a Saturday afternoon Saturday. And, then and then Wednesday night or Thursday night? Thursday night is the main stage. We'll have a full band. See how we that. work well Here. together? <laughs> yes. We just complete just everything. Like, I have to look at our website to remind myself sometimes. But um, we're on the Eastern Shore a couple times in August. Ramshead Shore House and I think Big Altiki Bar. That's our first time there. Um, so it's kind of random. It just every month is different. But the county fair, that's a fun one. When we get, I bring the kids and you bring, you know, the grand, whole family. Grandkid. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice That's thing. a huge event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Well, it's wonderful seeing the two of you again. Thank it's you. been too long. I think we were talking over yeah, a year. Over so, years. yes, we look forward Thank to seeing you. you more out at the senior centers. Thank you very Great much. Great to see you. Thank you. Food, music, fun, and friends. There's no better way to spend a summer afternoon than with everyone at O'Malley. And that was a wonderful time. Well, that wraps up this month's edition of Senior Centers in Action. Be sure to join us again in September when we'll visit more of the Anne Arundel County Senior Activity Centers to see how they're keeping their members in action. We'll leave you now with music from the O'Malley Senior Activity Center Barbecue. I'm Carla Schaefer, and we'll see you next time. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy.